Salutations crustaceans, I'm Lobster and today we are checking out a custom Valenti Jazz Bass. And this one has a killer spec. Let's check it out. This is a Valenti V21J4, a vintage style jazz bass from Nino Valenti. Nino is a friend of mine and a friend of the channel and has been building basses for a while. To hear more about Nino and what he's doing, check out our interview together in the lobster chat, as well as uh, some other Valenti content that I've done linked in the description below. I have my own custom Valenti jazz bass behind me right here. I get a lot of questions about this one and it's a killer bass. This one, however, is not mine. Nino sent this over and asked if I wanted to do a video on it, and I said sure. So big thank you to Nino for letting me borrow this instrument. Let's go over the spec of this V21 J4. This bass features a swamp ash body in a transparent white, and this is a gorgeous finish. It pairs so nicely with the black accoutrement. The black bridge, the black pickups, the black pickguard, black control plate, black hardware all around, and the black blocks on this maple on maple neck. Just a great aesthetic overall, and the components here are all top tier. We have Nordstrand big single pickups paired to a Nordstrand 2B preamp with a passive tone control as well. The controls are volume, blend, tone, and then a stacked treble and bass control that are both a cut and a boost. So we have a ton of flexibility here. Hardware on this bass is Hipshot USA all around. We have a Hipshot bridge and black Hipshot tuners, ultralights up at the headstock. Now, one thing that has always set Nino apart besides the high quality construction is the weight of his instruments. And this one is no different. This particular bass, I'm just gonna say it up front, is 7.7 .7 pounds. For a well-balanced jazz bass like this, you couldn't find a more gig-worthy instrument. And paired to this beautiful body is a maple on maple neck with black blocks. We have 21 frets, a 34 inch scale, and a inch and a half or 38 millimeter nut width. This is a very typical jazz bass profile. However, the finish on this neck is just absolutely spectacular. It's very light and very easy to navigate the neck up and down. It's not sticky at all. And it's just a joy to play, especially with the weight of the instrument. It feels like you're playing a cloud. It's really cool. And then up at the headstock, we see the Hipshot Ultralight Tuners, the Valenti logo, and the triple string retainer for maximum string stability. Overall, just a well-built and thoughtfully built bass. But we haven't even seen the half of it yet. Let's go ahead and turn this bass around. Around back, we see a large control cavity. This houses the battery as well. Uh, I, I do gripe about, you know, not having a battery door, but Nino will build whatever you want. Mine has a battery door, so... <laughs> It, it is what it is. This one was built without one. That's fine. We have an angled neck heel for easy access to the upper frets. And just the overall shape of this bass is just an altered jazz bass. So you have the vibe of the jazz, but with some tweaks to make it even more playable and more accessible. We also have the four screw neck attachment. Though it is not a typical Fender style, it looks to be a bit more spread out for increased stability. We also can see the piece of this one piece graphite reinforced maple neck. It has a gorgeous grain and it is very stable as well. And up at the top, we see the Hipshot Ultralight Tuners and the Valenti Signature Headstock. Now this is usually the part where I talk about the weight, but we already talked about that. I'll bring it up one more time. 7.7 .7 pounds. This is a 7.7 .7 pound base. Very well weighted for a base of this size and this quality. And how much does this Valenti V21 J4 cost? This is actually a secondhand reconditioned model at around $2,400. However, if you were to purchase this spec new, this would be coming in at around, I believe, $3,550. You may be thinking, hey, that's a lot of money. You're not wrong, but you are getting a custom USA instrument with top tier specs and top tier components. Nordstrand electronics all around, real Nordstrands, and on top of that, USA Hipshot hardware, lightweight materials, well-balanced, well-built. You couldn't ask for a better jazz bass. But enough talking about this bass, why don't I show you? You all know what you need to do. Go ahead and pinch that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. <laughs> Thanks. 
haven't played a four string in a while. <laughs> Great sounding bass. With these Nordstrand pickups and the Nordstrand preamp, you get so much clarity, but that vintage growl and vintage definition. It just sounds so good. Wow. <laughs> So as I mentioned, we have Nordstrand big single pickups paired to a Nordstrand 2B preamp. It's a nice pairing, and you have the option to, you know, kind of get whatever you want and tailor this to your choosing if you were to get a custom Valenti. So if you wanted the uh, big splits as opposed to the big singles, you could get that. You could get the blades, you could get whatever you want, but this particular spec I think is just absolutely stellar. Sorry for the dog in the background, it's my neighbor. <laughs> My neighbor's not a dog, my neighbor's a human, but I guess my neighbor is also a dog. They, they have a dog, so dog is technically my neighbor. So as I mentioned, we have the Nordstrand Big Singles paired to the Nordstrand 2B preamp. What you've heard was everything centered and the tone at 100%. Let's take the tone down to about 50% now, see what that sounds like. And here's the tone all the way down. Very nice. And the tone is a push-pull for a preamp bypass, which is a nice touch as well, meaning you don't have to rely on the 9-volt battery in the compartment. And if it ever runs out, you can simply bypass the preamp and keep playing. Here's what this bass sounds like with the preamp bypassed. And here is the preamp on. Very nice, so you really can't tell the difference between the preamp bypassed and the preamp centered. That is a good thing, that is a nice touch. That means you're really not losing out on any tone when you're bypassing the preamp. Very nice. Now let's go ahead and solo these pickups a little bit. These are single coils and in my noisy environment we are going to get some single coil hum. However, it is relatively mild on the scale of things. I've had worse. Uh, that being said, you do have the option to get humbuckers if you wanted to. This spec, however, is just the singles. Nothing wrong with that. Here's what that sounds like with the neck pickup soloed. Let's go ahead and pan the other way. Check out the bridge pickup. <laughs> and let's go ahead and center the blend control. I think that both pickups sound great soloed, and I think that this EQ as well can really add some character too. 
With the blend control centered and the tone at 100%, let's cut the bass entirely, leaving the treble centered. Let's boost the treble now to about 50%. Let's boost the treble all the way, see what happens. Uh, only at 100% you're starting to get only a little bit harsh, but overall I think that this is a very nice EQ. Very flexible. Now let's bring the bass up to center and cut the treble entirely. Here's what that sounds like. So some people may ask, why would you have a passive tone control when you have an active treble control? They do different things. Here is the tone all the way down with the treble center. Versus the tone up all the way and the treble all the way down. And if you combine the two, here's what you get. So yes, I think this is a very flexible combination with these pickups and this preamp. Now before I get a little slap happy, let's go ahead and play this with a pick a little. First, let's pan over to the neck pickup, leave the EQ centered. Actually, I'll take the tone to about 50%. Here's what that sounds like. Now let's go and take the blend back to center. There we go. Take the tone back up to 100%. Keep the EQ centered. Here's our pick once more. Okay, I'll take the pick away and let's see how this bass slaps. I'm actually going to add a little bit of bass to that. Let's add about a 50% bass boost, leave the treble as is. clarity of that. Uh... Just sit in that forever and mm, delicious. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and throw some drums behind this bass, see what it sounds like.
So here are my final thoughts on the Valenti V21J4, well, this particular example. Nino will pretty much build you whatever you want in terms of out there jazz basses, and he's done so many great builds, including my own custom one back here. I think he just does such a great job. He's very thoughtful in his building when it comes to, you know, the weight of the instrument, how everything works together, and yeah, thumbs up to Nino. He just does such a great job. I'm not going to rate this instrument as it's not a new instrument, it's being sold secondhand. And uh, I just think that, you know, every Valenti is going to be different. So there's no real like standard spec. Where the Verrazano series is something that I've already reviewed, and that's his more entry level, something that has a bit more uh, cookie cutter specs versus the customs, which are pretty much anything and everything. So great job, Nino. You built a killer bass here, a gigable bass, something that you can play for a long time and not feel fatigued. The neck profile is excellent. The weight of the instrument and the balance is excellent. I have no complaints or quarrels, and I think these Nordstrand pickups and the Nordstrand preamp do a great job of capturing that true jazz bass essence and just making the most out of that. So great job. Let me know what you all think about this Valenti V21J4 down in the comments below. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, and join our Discord channel. And leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about this Valenti V21J4. And as always, until we groove again.